So there's this thing in video called the 180 degree shutter rule. And if you're not familiar with it, it's essentially just saying that when you're shooting video, you should shoot with a shutter speed that's one over two times your frame rate, which is 180 degrees. And this is based on original film uh, cameras. That's how the shutter, the mechanical shutter inside actually worked. It was 180 degrees, half of the frame was exposed and the other half was open, giving you 180 degree shutter. And there are a couple people online recently talking about not using the 180 degree shutter rule for their video because they liked the way it looked or it gave them additional benefits. But I have to totally disagree with that. I use the 180 degree shutter rule almost all the time because it, is a, it, it looks the best. Honestly, it does. Having tried this over the years and years that I've been doing this, it does look the best. But to give you an actual example of that, I figured I'd shoot some examples here so you can see right now I'm using a 180 degree shutter. I know this because on the GH4 you can actually tell it to shoot with a 180 degree shutter rather than having to dial your specific shutter speed in like you do on some other cameras. So I'm not shooting like one over, well I am shooting one over 48, but I don't have to do that. I, it's set to 180 degrees so it updates based on my frame rate. So if I was shooting at 60 frames per second, it would automatically update to one over 120. But since I'm shooting 24 frames a second, one over 48, 180 degree shutter rule. That's what the motion right here looks like. You're getting kind of that motion blur that's typical with what your eyes actually see. You know, your eyes see motion blur, you know, wave your hand in front of your face, you'll see it. But this is 180 degree shutter speed. Now, I'm gonna switch the camera to a higher shutter speed so you can see the difference between the two. And you be the judge, you tell me what, what you think looks the best. I honestly think sticking with a 180 degree shutter looks the most similar to what your eyes see and it's what most people are trained to recognize as looking good or normal rather than it being stylized in a particular way. So here I've bumped my shutter speed up to or down to however you wanna look at it, 90 degrees. So this is a faster shutter speed. This is what the motion blur looks like here. I did compensate for the exposure using ISO or ISO. I bumped that up to 400. So you can kind of see what the motion blur looks like here. This is a probably faster, more hectic, more frantic look. If, if that means anything to you, but this is typically what you might see for like high action sports or uh, Mad Max recently, uh, that movie that just came out. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road used a lot of varying shutter speeds to kind of give a particular aesthetic to the image. But if you're shooting like this all the time, your footage is probably gonna look a little weird. Some people say that this looks crisper or sharper, but it actually looks less like reality than what your eyes see. This is probably not enough motion blur. If you shoot like this, it's gonna give your footage a little bit more of a higher energy uh, Im impact. And it might not be noticeable, you know, if there's not a lot of motion, like if someone's just talking like I am here, but the moment they move their hand, move their head or do anything like that, you're gonna see that the shutter speed has been altered and it's not following the 180 degree shutter rule. And that can be a problem because honestly, it usually gives away amateur video. You'll notice a lot of times people who don't have ND filters or they don't know quite how to compensate for their exposure, they'll use their shutter speed instead of using their ISO or their aperture, which is what you, ISO and aperture, that's what you wanna use to control exposure in video. But if you're using your shutter speed, that tends to be more uh, of an amateur move compared to what a professional would probably do. Now, there are exceptions to the rule, there always are, but you have to know the rule before you're gonna break it. And here's what a 45 degree shutter looks like. Again, I bumped up my ISO to help compensate for the exposure decrease from using the faster shutter speed. The faster your shutter speed, the less light is able to enter through the camera. So I'm moving my hands a lot so you can kind of see that there's virtually no motion blur. I can't move fast enough to really give motion blur. You're gonna see every stage of my hand. It's almost like a strobe light where you're seeing each individual photo rather than a smooth continuous motion. I can even see that here on the LCD. Um, now that that might be the look you're going for, but really I would I would strongly suggest not doing that unless you have a very particular reason for doing that. Now, when you remove motion blur like this, it, it helps when you're trying to slow down footage in post-production with something like Twixter or just slowing it down further than what the frame rate initially was set to. So if you wanna slow something down, you don't want motion blur. So if you know that's what you're gonna do, by all means, shoot with the high shutter speed because those software algorithms, they want those sharp, crisp lines so they can track the motion. 
when they have motion blur to deal with, it kind of throws the algorithms off and they struggle a little bit more. But again, if you're shooting just general, generic, normal stuff, whether it's a scene in a short film, documentary, a commercial, some B-roll, whatever it is, you probably don't wanna shoot with a shutter speed like this because you're not gonna have any motion blur and that's not natural, that's not what the human eye sees. So when people see it, even though they might not consciously know what they're looking at and, and why they feel like it's wrong, they're still gonna feel that subconsciously, like something's off, this isn't quite normal. And you definitely don't want someone watching your piece thinking that it's not normal if that's how it's supposed to be. And finally, here's a 23 degree shutter speed. Now there's probably not much difference between the 45 and the 23 at this point because I'm, I'm really not moving fast enough for the camera to see the difference, you know? It's just capturing it without motion blur. Now, if I were moving at like the speed of a car or a train or something like that, you would see a difference and you would get even crisper lines. But again, I cannot stress enough how this is not how you wanna shoot unless you have a very specific reason. People always say that there aren't rules in filmmaking and that you can do whatever you want. But the problem is you have to know the rule before you can know why you wanna break it for a particular reason. If you're just shooting all over the place willy-nilly, doing whatever you want, you're likely gonna get footage and an output that isn't quite what you had envisioned. So just keep that in mind next time you're filming. Now for fun, I'm gonna flip it the other way and go with a 360 degree shutter just to see kind of the extra motion blur and what that looks like. Now here's 360 degrees uh, motion blur. The entire frame is being exposed, so you're getting a little bit more motion blur than you would with the 180 degree. And for video, you can't go faster than this. If you're doing photography, you can do some long exposure stuff where you drag that shutter speed to like a second, two seconds, to 30 seconds, and you get all that motion blur, so you get those light streaks. But since we're doing video and we have a very specific frame rate that we need to hit, it can only expose for the length of the frame itself. So for 24 uh, frames per second, you're getting one over 24, and that's about as slow as you can go. Unless you have, you have a particular camera that lets you kind of extend that shutter speed across multiple frames, but that's probably particular to your camera. So if you know you can do that, you probably already know how. Uh, but for this test and these purposes, I'm just going with the maximum of 360 degrees so you can kind of see what that motion blur looks like. And there's more motion blur. Certainly, uh, some people like this. I, I particularly think it gets a little smeary. It's a little bit too much. So again, defaulting back to 180 degree shutter rule, like that is a rule for a reason. People are used to seeing that and it's pretty close to what the eye sees. So shooting with 180 degree shutter rule is like just kind of your go-to and always sticking with that. It's probably gonna do you the best in the long run. But maybe you disagree. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I know this is kind of a subjective topic. I don't think it's quite controversial. Uh, you might disagree with me, but that, hey, that's just your opinion and I have my opinion. I don't think there's any like right or wrong way to do it other than the fact that there is a rule and there is a rule for a reason. And that's kind of what you should stick with for the most part, unless you have a very specific reason for switching your shutter speed based on whatever your project might be.